Okay, so the reality is like 90% of you don't have a baseball glove mallet. So all we're using today is our glove and a baseball. Let's just start by saying this glove looks fantastic. Buckler did a very good job, but it still needs a ton of work. I can close it this far, but once it hits that point, it won't close any further. The whole reason I realized I needed to make this video was actually because I hurt my thumb. I had a jammed thumb so I could barely get my hand in a glove and I couldn't squeeze it whatsoever. So I was doing a ton of mallet work where I was just hitting the palm. And what I did was I hit the palm a ton and a ton and a ton and the glove was still incredibly incredibly stiff. I was thinking to myself, why is it so stiff if I put so much work into it? And it's because all I did was hit the palm and I did absolutely nothing to the other side. We're gonna be using one simple technique to actually break in both the front and back of the glove. This is gonna help make your glove deeper. So if you want a deeper pocket, do this a lot. If you want just an average pocket, do it a little bit. It's good for your glove, but maybe don't do it constantly. Like I said, I hit the glove a ton, all in the palm, but my hand wasn't even in the glove, so the inside and the back had nothing done to them whatsoever. This technique helps break in the palm, the back, and even the inside of the glove all at the same time. This is so simple. Take your baseball, take your glove, you're gonna throw together, obviously we've all done that before, but you kinda collapse it against the ground and push over. Now if you want a deeper, deeper pocket, you wanna push this thumb like all the way past the pinky because that's gonna end up giving you more of that thumb to pinky break in. Now, if you just want an average pocket, do the same thing, but push up a little bit more rather than just straight this way. So it's like going this direction a little more than this direction. I personally wanna do the deep pocket with this glove. So I'm gonna be going way past the pinky. This is all you have to do. You're using the ground and pushing against it. So you're really not squeezing with your actual hand. It's more like you're just pushing over to make the glove close. The thing that we're doing is we're teaching the glove to close around our hand. So the leather back here is not used to having to stretch around your finger and your hand. So we're forcing it to start doing it. When you don't do this, you just have really goofy, bad break-ins where it's clearly being over-squeezed because the only way you're breaking in the back of the glove is by squeezing it. And when you over-squeeze it, you get palm bubbles, you get bad creases, you get ugly baseball gloves. Now, if you do have your mallet with you, it's the same thing, but you're just hitting and pushing over like that. I cannot stress how important this is. If it's an outfield glove, first basement, even a catcher's glove, you're using this method. I need you to. We need to figure out a name for it maybe comment what it should be called. I wanna just repeat that you're not squeezing with your actual hand, it's more so that you're just using the ground to push your glove down and just get it used to closing. Very, very basic. Now the glove is already feeling looser. It's super hot in here, so it's probably a little bit more flexible, but also what we're doing is helping a ton. Plus, some gloves are just extra, extra stiff, and if that's your problem, I'll meet you over in this video where I broke in one of the stiffest gloves I've ever owned.